client um, sort it out because more and more the value add and the differentiation for our brand is our opinion. It's not just the data. It's not just the report. It's our opinion on top of that because um, the, the business that we're in, while it tries to be very scientific, it's still driven a lot by sentiment and it's driven a lot by um, reputation. And you know, if you think of Google, where would they choose to put their headquarters is a pretty big deal. It's, it, it reflects well on their brand. So we would try to help them identify the right location, the right amenities that suits their brand, that suits their people of, of to get them there quickly, get them there efficiently, and make a space where they can be productive and continue to grow as a company. So it's not just, here's a research report or here's, here's some data. You figure out which square footage uh, footprint is going to be better for your company. There's much more to it to that. So my strategic imperatives as the brand director was, were, or still are, to try to modernize this, this you know, really great and, and uh, respected company uh, with a long heritage in a, in a slightly traditional business. Um, take them into the digital world and also support and drive sales in, in new modern ways, not just in the old-fashioned way of, you know, give me a brochure as a prop to kick down the door and have a meeting with my old clients. Um, and also to try to acquire new clients, not just retain the ones we have. Um, the other one is to try to, to take us global, and I mentioned trying to connect all these local people, these local specialists who are more expert in their market than I could ever be, but trying to find the things that they have in common, connect those together, scale them up, push them back out. Um, trying to raise the perspective of local marketers to be more, more global, think broader than just their postcode, um, and also find the commonalities between them. And, in, and hopefully raising their individual profiles and their professional uh, standing in the organization and maybe their careers as well. So I think the brand can help them do that. Uh, and then build the brand, build the corporate brand. First acknowledge that we have a corporate brand and what a corporate brand means, and then build it and, and differentiate it because I'll, I'll come on to this in a second. Um, there's a real opportunity in professional services for differentiation. Um, if those of you who have worked in the, in the sector know, um, it's not sexy. It's not always interesting. It's not always about innovation. There's a lot of sameness out there, people claiming the same thing. Um, actually, I'll ask another question. How many people have used the phrase, our people are our most important asset? And how many people believe that? Okay, so we, we argue about this all the time because, you know, the people come and go. Coca-Cola is a, a classic example. I think someone said about Coca-Cola, you can burn down the factories, but I'll keep the brand and I can rebuild the business, you know, the next year. Um, the people leave, they come and go. Uh, when you get as big as we are, there has to be something more than just a few key individuals who are the heart and soul of the company, and that's what the brand is. And for us, that's what holds it together. So... As we go digital, it's more and more important to, to get a hold of all these pieces. Um, but the challenge from an asset management standpoint is I call the metaphor problem and the atrium problem. And the metaphor problem is I need to illustrate winning. I need a photo that shows performance. I need an ad that's about partnership. How do I do that? Well, you can go to a stock photography site and punch in a few key words, but you're likely to get stuff like this. And these are actual things that have been downloaded by my team. Now, nothing really wrong with them on the surface. These are our corporate colors, by the way. So a graphic designer in Poland might think, what's wrong, Brandt? Why can't I use this? And because I'm sort of a snobby person who you know, works in London and New York and, you know, uh, Mad Men is my favorite TV show. I just look down my nose and go, oh, that's just not good. Um, and then we also find these lo the collection of these lovely people. I don't know if you found these in your agency or in your, in your company, but I wish I could hire them because they're so hardworking. And they're so cute, and you just want to kind of squeeze them. And they're always thinking really deep thoughts. But, like any manager will tell you, they're always bringing me problems and not solutions. And I want solutions, so I can't use these guys. As cute as they are with their little puzzles, can't use them. I need something else. And my other problem is we need to show partnership and deal-making. And this is the atrium problem. And these, you know, I'm not going to point to any stock photography house, but this is, Steve, this is a really good deal. I can't wait to get back to my office and tell people about it. Joe, it's a great deal. It's great doing business with you today. Anton, I can't wait to get back and talk about this deal. Yes, it was great that you flew all the way here to do this deal. I'm sure we'll go over the numbers, and it'll turn out to be a really good deal. I think I went to high school with her. 
she's, she's changed her hair quite a bit. But anyway, so you, you, the, in professional services, this is the battle you fight where, you know, Anya, who does part-time marketing, part-time, she's the secretary of the MD in the Serbia office. She's not trained to do this. How do we help her? How do we help meet her goals, help her drive sales, and keep the brand to the level that we want it to be? So enter... So this is actually a real ad, and this is funny because this combines both of those worlds, both the little red thingies and the people in the atrium. And I'm not going to tell you who it is. It's embarrassing, but I, thought that, I just found that last week. I thought that was really funny. Um, it's not one of ours, thank God. Um, so I did some research among my team. Um, I did an online survey about our existing brand, where we had a brand resource center, which was uh, uh, an intranet, where we had put, as Yen said, we got the guidelines for the new brand, and it was several chapters, and it was a bunch of PDFs, and we put them onto the intranet and said, if you have any questions about the logo, go there. There it is. And so I asked people, do, do you use that thing? And people said, yeah, yeah, we do. I said, but if only a few of you really use it on a regular basis. Those of you who don't, why not? And I found out that a lot of times they were going there, they couldn't find what they wanted, or there wasn't enough content there. And I said, okay, we need to do something about that. So not only do we need to build a better tool, but we need to put more stuff in it. And this was kind of anecdotally some of the feedback I was getting from the very positive to be great to see what some of these other countries are doing because I feel isolated and alone here in Boston. I think I'm doing well, but I don't know. I need validation to, mm, I didn't really find you know, performance and leadership in the stock photos that you've paid for and put in there, to when are you going to give us a new template, to do we have to use these images, to oh, it's so boring. So yes, you know, guilty as charged. I'm just one guy um, against an army of thousands out there, so I'm doing my best. So my challenges were, classically in real estate, location, location, and location. And the first location was, as I said, I'm one guy. Um, global, global marketing isn't a big department. Um, I didn't have carte blanche to fly around the world and do one-on-one -on -one surgeries with every team and help them and bring up their game. Um, so I was a bit at, at a distance, at an arm's length challenge to try to do that. Um, and I didn't have uh, the ability to build a, a team and hire people locally and regionally at a pretty senior level to do that. Uh, the second location challenge is the sort of composite character I mentioned s somewhat facetiously, but we do do this internally of um, Anya, is imagine she is a secretary to the MD in a small market that maybe has four or five people, and she's also responsible for marketing. But she needs to help reach her goals, help her brokers do their deals, but also she's getting emails from Global to tell her she needs to do these things. So we need to think like her and be empathetic with what she needs to do. So the system or the solution needs to work at that level for her. Um, and then the third location challenge is I don't have a place. Um, I don't have Coca-Cola World in Atlanta. I don't have the BMW Operations Center where I can bring dealers in and show them this is the way your dealership should look. I don't have even Legoland where I can say, look at the fun things you can make with Lego. Um, again, very decentralized. So I don't have Jones Lang LaSalle World where I can bring salespeople in and take them through. Um, you know, whether you're Cisco or Oracle or IBM or Microsoft, you have these sort of showcase opportunities to do that. Um, so what I needed to do was put together the requirements for my asset management system, and I needed a place. I needed a place where I could put stuff and where I could send people. It's a virtual place, but in the world of emails and intranets, it's much easier to send someone to something where they can go in and find it and experience it themselves as opposed to go to this FTP site and download this, you know, or I will email you something. Um, it's a bit like the QR code question, which I know we're, we're dealing with. You know, is it a gimmick? Is it really good? And in our, in our situation, I don't want people to spend more time on the technology. I want them to get right to the content. But I think the examples that Jason was talking about is, in some cases, you construct the experience where the logging on, the fiddling with the ticket, and that kind of stuff is a bit nifty, and it applies. But a lot of times, technology is a bit of a gimmick, and it's the place that you want to get people to, not the journey. So I want to get them there with less friction, less large files and emails, less corrupted links and that sort of thing. I want to keep, keep it fresh. I found that people would go to the old site, and if they go and they didn't see anything new, they would leave. 
So I wanted to be able to see, look, not only is it a place where you can go, but I'm actually putting stuff in there. I'm buying and investing in the brand, putting assets in there, come back and see what's been there, uh, what's been added and what's new. And finally, I wanted it to look like ours. I wanted it to look like it was Jones Lang LaSalle. I wanted it to use our assets to actually build and design it. So that's what we did. We, we, our design agency designed it. Um, we customized the skinning and the front end using uh, the imagery that is on brand for us so that we finally had a place where people could go and see, oh, yes, that's how our images are used, that's how our colors are used, that's how our typefaces are used. Um, it's, uh, it's got a, we took the opportunity to actually write a brand book, um, which is a very short uh, piece on what is a corporate brand, why is it important, because I kind of took for granted that everyone knew that, but a lot of people really didn't, because a lot of our, our marketers are basically about sales support and not really about brand building. So it was an important place, uh, an opportunity to do that and, and add that content. And these are just some of the pages where we could actually go from the very flat these are our identity guidelines to this is kind of how they come to life. And again, the, the central, decentral challenge is I don't have a budget to create big global campaigns to push out. I need to find stuff that's happening around the world and maybe give them some counsel or find the good stuff and bring it up and push it back down. So this was an opportunity for the first time for me to create kind of on-brand content to put there to hopefully inspire people. Um, so it has everything, it has all the guidelines, but it's a much more easy way to find it by section, and it gives you kind of a clue what you're going to get in each folder, whereas before it was very flat, and it was just HTML, and most people would say, I can't find anything. Or if I tried to move stuff, oh, forget it, just, you know, it, people went nuts. Um, and again, quite restrictive in a lot of ways. Uh, we, we thought long and hard about the logo. That's the thing everybody needs. And unfortunately, it's the thing that gets abused a lot um, because we actually have a strap line attached to our logo and it confuses people a lot about whether they should and shouldn't use it or whether it's too big or too small. So we basically cut it down to a very simple decision. What language, online or print, and black or white, and that's the one you get instead of, here's a whole bunch, and here's a small one and a large one. So keep it really simple for people. Um, so uh, just to conclude, we've been on a bit of a journey. Um, we've gone from a very local business to a very global business, um, which I think we're starting to, to think more globally about big projects, big world-changing projects like the Olympics. Um, we've worked on the Olympics in Beijing and on the bid in Chicago and now with the team here in London. So that's global expertise that we're, we're putting in in our business but also into our brand from very fragmented to selectively centralized. Centralized where we can and how we can and where, where the business will accept it. Um, from this idea of being very nice and kind of co coaxing, cajole, can you, can you please, if it's not too much trouble, can you try to stay on brand to a little more command and control, a little more sort of, you know, this is, this is what you need to do. Now, we have more authority to do that now. We are larger. We have the mandate of the CEO to do that. We have me in place to help do that. The risk, though, is with technology, back to the police metaphor, we don't want to be too much like RoboCop, you know, shoot first, ask questions later. Um, we want to leverage the technology. Perhaps RoboCop version 6.0 is a little more sensitive. Um, so from the idea of brand police to really brand champions. We want to empower the local people to understand the brand, how it works, how it lives and breathes, and they can help their, their business people locally. Um, from the idea of sort of brand management as you know, a thing we have to sort of can and can't do, to asset management. This is a strategic asset. We take it seriously. We invest in it. We've invested in this digital asset management system. We've created a place for us to go and work together. Um, the uh, the final thing I'll talk about is, I don't know if you ever watched The Wire, but in The Wire they talk about the idea of having soft eyes to be a good detective. And I really love that idea. And that's just about being empathetic to your surroundings. So as, as brand asset owners and as business people, we have to have soft eyes to the local needs. The brand has to be refreshed and has to move on. It has to have new things created and added to it. But you have to be sensitive to, to what happens around you locally as well as globally. So people always say, okay, great, Brent, you know, you've, you've bought the system, what's the payoff? You know, my IT guys, you know, where are we going to get money out of this? And, well, we're going to save money. Intuitively, I know we're going to save money because all the slides that people have under their desk are going to go away. All the emails we send around the world choking up our email system.